The next thing we're going to do is add the methanol to the rest of the, the rest of that methanol to the volumetric. Whenever working with the methanol, always make sure you're using an LCMS grade methanol. This is an extremely pure methanol. Only use this. Do not, and make sure it's only something that's been uh, dedicated strictly for research. Do not pull it out of the stock cabinet. For the general chemistry, it's not pure enough, and it also comes from a different budget. So only use strict LCMS grade methanol that has been allocated for you. If you're running low on methanol, make sure you're telling your PI that you need more methanol. So simply enough, we're going to transfer it. I like to take it to about a few centimeters, about a centimeter below the fill line. At this point, take your pipetter, get your face down in there, and fill. Chemistry 101, make sure your face is parallel, fill line, and very gently pull it in so that the bottom of the meniscus is touching the mark. Don't overfill. So right now, about right, drop more. Good. Next, put the cap on. You want to you wanna make sure that your compounds inside are well dissolved. So making sure that you have a secure solid fit, only do this if you have a secure fit on top. Turn the beaker upside down, turn the volume of the clasp upside down, approximately 10 times. Okay, so that was 10 times. So now, we have our mixture ready to go right here. So now, we gotta figure out just exactly how much naringin we added to our volumetric flask. To do that, we know that we added 0 0.003 grams of naringin to the flask. We also know the molecular weight of naringin as 580.53 grams per mole or 580.53 dollars. Now, putting into this equation, we added 0 0.0035 grams to 0 0.1 liters, or 100 milliliters. Dividing, uh, dividing the 0 0.0035 by the volume of the flask and by the molecular weight gives us 6.02 times 10 to the negative fifth moles, or 60 micromolars. We now know that we've created a solution of approximately 60 micromoles. Make sure that all measurements and observations that you make are recorded in your lab notes. Once you've made your solution, make sure that it's properly labeled. Have the concentration of the material, the name of the material, always use full names. Do not use chemical formulas, because some chemical formulas can be the same for different compounds and different chemicals. So make sure you're using the exact name the date that you created it, and your initials, so that when looking back, we can find out who precisely made anyway, the different solutions. What we're going to do now is we're going to prepare the sample for it to be loaded into the instrument. These are the glass vials we use. Each one can hold approximately one, 1 1.2 milliliters of material. and it's secured with a cap. Pause while he gets out the cap. There's the cap. The cap has a special membrane on top of it. So when you load this in the auto sampler, a needle comes down, punctures the cap, tapes a little material out, and then retracts. Yes. 
Okay. So we have our pipetter. We have it set for 200 microliters. We're going to put in about 800 microliters of material into the vial. If you put too little material, too little sample into the vial, it will the machine will not be able to detect it. It won't be able to pick it up. The cutoff is between about four and six hundred milliliters, so on the safe side, we like to put in about eight hundred milliliters, just so that we know that the machine is getting all of the uh, all of the sample. It doesn't have to be precise, just um, as long as you get over 600, 700 milliliters. If you're off by a few milliliters, it doesn't matter at this point. That's about enough right there. We'll put in one more just for good measure. on the vial what it is, what you're loading into the machine. So in this case, we're saying 60 micromolar NAR for Neuringen. Okay, next thing we gotta do is load it into the instrument. So we open up the auto sampler, withdraw the left tray open it up. Now in this case we're only doing a single run, so we only have one sampler, one sample. Load it into uh, column one, row one, close it up. Now this machine is ca capable, this can hold upwards of uh, 70 odd samples in one tray. We got two trays. So at one time this machine can process 140 different samples. We haven't reached that level yet, but uh, we're open. You just load it into the machine. Well, a closer. Load it in. Make sure it clicks. That way, you know the sand of the tray is in the machine. Close the sand.